I just want to let you know I'm never going to forgive you for making me go after Robert. <laughs> so my parents are here tonight. My mother and my father are over in the corner there. That's when you hold your hand up. <laughs> you say you do it. And this story is kind of about them. So when I was born, I didn't come out ass first and blue. I came out with jaundice and I was yellow. But as they handed me to my mother, the nurse said, good luck with this one <laughs> and warned her that I would be fun <laughs> and I'm sure for the first couple years of my life I was I'm sure I was like most babies where I just cried and I pooped behind the couch because I thought no one would be able to find me <laughs> but then I started to be able to dress myself and ask the question why and so when I came downstairs one day and wasn't wearing underpants and my mom said, you have to wear underpants, and I said, why? And she said, because it's just what you do. And I said, that's not a good enough answer. <laughs> so I stopped wearing underpants in kindergarten. <laughs> and that went on for a few years. <laughs> not just a few. <laughs> I am wearing them now. time I also realized that I didn't like seams, probably because I wasn't wearing underpants. <laughs> so I went to my mom and I said, why can't we start making my clothes at home? And she didn't have a good enough answer. So she started making my clothes at home. And uh, to give you an example, take any color in your repertoire, pick your favorite color, I don't care, and add pea green to it. <laughs> so like blue, but with a hint of pea green. <laughs> and then put it in flannel. <laughs> and then think of men's sweatpants on someone my size and cut off the elastic from the bottom because I didn't like elastics either. <laughs> also, I didn't wear underwear, so <laughs> you can imagine what would have happened if I had been pissed. <laughs> I also didn't really know how to color coordinate, so I used to get my mom to make fleece jackets that matched the pants. <laughs> so it was like pea green on top of pea green in flannel, two sizes too big. And it wasn't like I was a stupid kid, I knew I looked really shitty. <laughs> but that same pain of beauty is a bitch and I wasn't going to listen to it. I'm an esthetician now. <laughs> So anyways, after this handful, not only was I like that, but for the first week of school, every year until grade five, I would spend the first week screaming and crying and literally wrapped around my mother's left leg, screaming some nonsense about don't ever leave me in front of 30 of my peers. <laughs> if I wasn't cool enough, I'm sure I was gaining points then. <laughs> in grade six, the screaming finally stopped, but I still wasn't wearing underpants. <laughs> So one day in the schoolyard, I was sitting by the hopscotch field by the highlighter blue bike stands that are about yay big that I had a tendency of tripping on when little boys stole my hat. And this other little boy who we'll refer to as Fetish because he had one for my feet, I later found out. Oh. Hey Philip, he still does and he Facebooks me about it. He did two days ago. Anyway, he came over to me and he said, do you like any little little boys in class? And I was thinking, well, it's not you, but I said, I like people, sure. And he said, yeah, but do you like like somebody? And I said, yes. And he said, will you tell me? And I said, no. And he said, if I guess it, will you tell me if I'm right? And I'm sure like most of the ladies in the audience, I was conniving in grade six. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to play this game because I figure... If he does guess it, and he does find out, it's going to get back to Wayne, who, that's not his real name, but for his identity, we're going to call him Wayne Gretzky, because he played hockey, and that's wicked attractive in a six-year-old boy. Still is, kind of. Any hockey players in the audience tonight? So anyway, this guy starts guessing. He goes, is it Ben? And I said, nope. Is it Sean? Nope. Is it Gareth? Nope. Is it Griffin? Nope. Is it me? <laughs> nope. <laughs> is it Wayne? Oh, shit. Now, I didn't swear out loud, because my mother's like a ninja. And I thought she was going to jump out of the bush at any time and just be like, ah, bad birds. So I just went in my head, oh, shit. 
okay, I should lie. I should just say no just as quickly as I have with all the other names, and then he won't know. But that was too late, and he had caught on. And he said, ah, I knew it was him. <laughs> and so I got up and I said, I'm not telling. And I marched back to the classroom. But then I worried myself to sleep that night because I figured Wayne was going to find out and my conniving plan was going to bite me in the ass in one of two ways. One, he liked me back and I was the one that caved first. Or two, he didn't like me and now I was five notches more uncool than I started, which is pretty damn low. <laughs> So I finally fell asleep that night, and when I woke up in the morning, the answer was in the bottom of my sock drawer. And I stood there, staring at myself in those floor-length mirrors that was a little too tall because I was a really slow developer, <laughs> with a package in my hand of cardboard, with the plastic seal on top of it that you know is going to take 15 years to break down in the landfill. <laughs> and I was flipping through it going, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. My hands shook as my nails that I'd bitten to crap ripped open the cardboard and I flipped through to Tuesday and I detached those little plastic attacher thingies that always rip your tags. I don't even know why they put them on things. <laughs> it's not like it's stopping any of them one from shoplifting. <laughs> and I put those Tuesday panties around my ankles and I stood there. And I thought to myself, this is going one of two ways. I'm either about to join a lingerie wearing masses of adulthood or it's going to be that feeling again, like an Indian burn on your upper thigh, just pushing pressure into the places where pressure shouldn't be put. And so I closed my eyes really, really tight, and I ripped up those panties, and I ruffled around in my pajama drawer for the only denim that's in there, which, by the way, is really easy to find when everything else is flannel. <laughs> and I put on these jeans that looked worn with love and overwear, like overwear, but really they were just worn with neglect and dust. I buttoned them up like a fat kid trying to get into something that's too small, but really they were too big. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, don't move. Because it's as soon as you move that that weird, bunchy feeling or pushing you in all the wrong places. And I'm not religious, but every time I had to go through this crap, I thought of one thing. Adam and Eve didn't start out wearing clothes, so why the hell do I? <laughs> I haven't sinned that I know of. Except for swearing when my mom wasn't around. And so... I stood there and I thought, well, i got to find an adult top to go with this whole ensemble. And I looked in my closet and I got this oversized Gap cardigan. You know the ones with like the ugly sparkly things on top? Yeah, that's the most adult top I had. <laughs> and it was a size too big because my mom thought I was fatter than I was. Thanks, mom. <laughs> things are still too big. I'm a medium. <laughs> I went downstairs, and as I neared the bottom of the stairs, my sister looked up and said, Mommy, Steffi's wearing pants. And my mom went, shh, maybe she doesn't know. <laughs> but I did know, and I knew I looked hot. And so I went, I am ready for school. And that day in the playground, I figured I could hang out with the cool kids. So we had this stump at the back of our school, which is Seaview. If anyone here is from Seaview, you know what I'm talking about. And they used to roll back and forth all the time. And all the grade 7 kids stood on it and tried not to fall off. And if you, stood, and if you fell off, you were the loser in the crowd. I was cool enough for the stump that day. <laughs> and so I got up there on the stump, and I was rolling back and forth, looking for a blonde faux hawk somewhere out in the thing. And I saw it, and he made a beeline towards me, but not like those fake beelines that you guys talk about, like a real beeline. Like he had to talk to people along the way, and then he forgot something, and then he came back. And I stood there the whole time, and I fell off that log three times. But by the time he got there, I, wasn't, I was back up on the log with my hands in my pockets, which was a really, really uncomfortable way when you fall off of it. Because <laughs> those pockets were tight in those pants. And uh, he came up to me and he said, hey. And I said, hey. And he said, hey. <laughs> you want to go for a walk? And I said, sure. So we went for a walk around the field. And as we're walking, he's like, so. And I was like, so. And he was like, so. And I considered changing the subject at that point, but... I don't really know a whole lot about math, and the only thing that came to my mind was you should talk about math class, so I just went, so. <laughs> and he's like, I was thinking maybe you wanted to go to the Valentine's Day dance with me, because I don't know, maybe it would be a fun time, and I just thought I'd ask you to see if you'd say yes. And I went, sure. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so like Jade, and I'm sure many of the people that get up here, I have an anxiety disorder. <laughs> So he then left, and that was our first conversation. And that night I literally cried myself to sleep and got so sick I ended up throwing up, as I often did. Shout out to my mom for putting up with it. 
shout out to my dad for pretending to be deaf and never coming into the room. <laughs> my parents slept in the same bed, so obviously my dad found out that I was a little upset. And that morning as I was crying into my cereal and my sister, who was 18 months younger than me, was like, in her wisdom, Steffi, stop crying, it'll be okay. And I just ignored her. And my dad came over and put his shoulders on my, his hands on my shoulders and said, you want me to fix it, princess? And I said, yes, because apparently I had developed a tendency to just say yes to any question that a man had asked me. <laughs> Still working on that one. <laughs> Again, any hockey players in the audience? So that day at school, I peeked around the wall of my elementary school as my father, the big kid on the playground, knelt down to the level of a little kid with a blonde faux hawk and did what I could only assume was fixing the thing. <laughs> Which I later found out went a little something like this over the cloakroom trash can as Wayne enlightened me. Well, he handed me a chocolate kiss the size of a small dashend, which is a dog, and an ugly one. And he said, your dad said you're just not ready to date guys yet. <laughs> And I said, okay. <laughs> and he said, but I'll wait for you. <laughs> Guess what? He didn't. He's engaged now. 